following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the June 24th, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Everyone out there is having a great day. How about we have an extraordinary day? And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life, life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, during this next hour, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, We've got you covered. Let those fingers do the walking. You can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. If you'd be kind enough in that subject heading to put radio show question, of course, in our Tiger's Den, any ping will do. So we'll get to Ruby's. We'll get to Peter's. We want to get to all of the questions that you have. But for the moment, let's go ahead and get this uh, magical, marvelous Monday started. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow, 43 points. That's less than two-tenths of a percent to the upside. S&P is flat. NASDAQ 100 up 10 points, about a little over one-tenth of a percent. Semis are up four-tenths of a percent. The other indices are in the red out there, led by the uh, transports down one percent, trading off 98 points at 102.53.51 as we speak. Gold is up nearly 19 bucks at 14.19. Silver is trading up 10 cents at 15.39. Leading the charge to the upside, it is PC. M Inc. up 42% uh, or 10 bucks. Crystal Biotech up nine. IAC Interactive up eight. To the downside, it is Alta Beauty Salon down nearly 4% or 13. Buckaroonies Beyond Meat off 11. Shopify down 11 as well. Of course, I want to look at what you want to uh, look at. And uh, let's just, uh, so we do have some questions that have come in. Why don't we go to uh, those first? First one coming in from Mike in Sarasota. And Mike wants to take a look at Domino's Pizza. He wants Domino's Pizza for a short. And he's looking at, no, just he's considering a put spread on it. But let's just go take a look at Domino's Pizza. Try to give to Mike the parameters. The most important of which is, has Domino's Pizza made a top? And is it trading back into support? So we don't have the topping question answered just yet, uh, at least with regard to pattern. But what we can see is we've got the daily, the weekly, and the monthly, and quite frankly, the quarterly set of profiles on this one screen. Dead center is your weekly. To the left is your daily time frame. Now, Mike, the daily profile that just recently formed, the bottom of just the bottom of which is just slightly, and I mean slightly, like by a tick or two below the prior bottom. Yet the top of the current box is also above the prior one. So for me, that is a neutral message. Typically, the way that profiles will form in a bullish structure uh, set of profiles is the the bottom will be above the prior bottom, the top above the prior top. Not always, but but I'm just giving you my take right now, so I'm more neutral. But that's even more important than the mirror because uh, you've now got Domino's Pizza trading back towards the bottom of its daily profile. That's not the only thing, Mike. When you look at this chart, I'm sure you spotted the hammer candle from two days ago which also was a test of 274.31. Maybe not exactly the actual low was 274.56. So the beauty here is, look, I don't need to guess or estimate whether you're right or wrong to want to be short Domino's Pizza. The, this, this one daily chart just simply gives everything to you. 
Because what you and I know is the expression, the one rhyming expression that we like, is if you see a close below the low of a of a hammer candle, if you're long, you're wrong. And we've got the uh, TAS market profile, the daily profile, to um, – in addition to that, so, uh, you know, Mike, you're trading at 275.27. I'd wait for a close below 274.31 before I'd say, okay, Domino's Pizza is getting ready to head uh, south out here. If we pull over the, uh, and, and you've got then 272.91, quite frankly, is the bottom of its bullish structured weekly profile. Um, so that's where you'll get the message. Now, if we look at the daily time frame chart for Stevie's other tools out here, do we see any kind of a topping signal? First would be my question because I don't see a bottoming signal. I don't really even see it on the topping side out here. Other than the fact that price ran into resistance at the prior breakdown, that TDST green resistance line out here, you can see the support line. If Mike is right and Domino's Pizza is getting ready to go on sale out here, I'm not talking two for $5.99. I'm talking getting down to 246.50 then at this case here mike i say a close below the hammer candle and then specifically now really a close below 272.91 would be your trigger uh and right now i just think you're too close to that to be able to make that call you're also asking for i guess that was it you were just giving me an update on palo Alto networks and lamb research so there you go as Gus would say from my big fat Greek wedding. I hope that that helps you out. Next question that came in is, uh, oh, this is a subscriber question, but more so with regard to uh, a subscriber response. So I won't, re I'll, I'll take care of that this afternoon. Kay writes in and Kay wants to take a look at Microsoft. So let's go take a look at Microsoft, MSFT. And then let's go ahead and uh, try to read her question. Can you look at Microsoft? Well, we got that done. I don't have a position. How high do you see it going? And then secondarily, uh, I think NQ and ES won't make a move without this stock. Well, let's say that you're correct on that. Uh, and you're asking how high can Microsoft go? First thing, Kay, is today is a brand new profile, and the top of that box is 137.73, and price is trading at 138.21. So what does that tell us? On the first day of a bullish structured profile, and price is trading above that resistance level of 137.73. I don't know if it'll close above it, but if it does, a gigantic in strength when we take a look at uh, Microsoft out there. Do I see any uh, reasons to be cautious, Microsoft? Well, if we look at the daily time frame chart, it's very similar to, I would say, the S&P 500 and other indices. You know, today looks like day six of a potential TD setup nine count. Look, the last nine count out here, identified short-term tops and bottoms. What do I mean by that? <clears throat> Actually, I, I take that back. I am wrong with regard to the last tie out here on April 25th. But you can see that TD9 count on May 13th and then a, a push up to resistance, which was that TD setup resistance line. On the trading day of June 7th, that was a very bullish message for Microsoft as price closed over that resistance level. All right, so the question is how high can it go? Um, hey, on the monthly chart, just pull over the monthly chart, what do we see out here? We see price stretching, moving higher with less relative energy, but you know, okay, that's that's only an issue if we were to see some type of bearish reversal can, but we don't see that in the daily time frame just yet. We come back from this uh, break. Let me see if I get my horizontal trading range screen up and take a look at Microsoft for you. To answer the question, where is it headed? We'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's go back to Microsoft out here. During that break, I was able to uh, bring up the uh, horizontal trading range chart here for Microsoft. So it takes us all the way back to the uh, 1986 uh, time frame out here. This is a monthly chart that we're looking at. The red horizontal lines represent these uh, horizontal trading ranges out here. And so they're very helpful. Um, you can see uh, now, I just have the, the monthly up. I could add the weekly. It would help to understand. Well, let me just do this here. So here's just the monthly. You can see on the, the most recent pullback inside Microsoft back in December 2018, price, price came right back down to that monthly horizontal trading range boundary line, 93.85 out here. Somebody might be asking, well, how come price didn't stop at the monthly on the way up in October of 2018? And, um, you know, we, we use these as guidelines, but if I add the weekly profiles to this, no, the weekly didn't, didn't do it. Um, let me get out here. Maybe it was the dailies. I uh, can turn those on, too. But, but really, to answer Kay's question out here, um, now the dailies didn't do it either. But, Kay, so when we do take a look at the monthly, it's very possible in the 141 range, 140.48 is what shows up on my screen, that that could be a resistance level. Um, we're above all profiles. There's really, if I were to draw an A to B equal CD pattern on here, looking at the monthly chart, it would blow your mind with regard to that price projection. Because as you take a look at this, folks, the A point from a monthly standpoint, it have to say is back in uh, 2015, August of 2015, and that was at a price level of 39 bucks. So you, your A point, your your A to B would be from 39 to 116. We're not going to do that. We're we're not going to use that for price projections out here. Instead, we're going to say 141 or 156 is where Microsoft appears to be headed. So I hope that that helps you out. Best of luck with that uh, trade that you are considering. Now, Ruby in the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at natural gas. She wanted to look at the September contract out here. And so Ruby, Tuesday, Ruby, um, let me see how much information is here it's for September. It's not too bad here. So it, here's what you've got inside. I know you can't, it's hard to see um, on this chart. We'll, I'll pull over the continuous contract on the other charts uh, out here because uh, I don't have September up here. 
Um, but this candle today is a is a bullish reversal signal. So that at, at least at present, that's a bull sash. Is that important, Ruby? Is the question that we should be asking ourselves? Because you know, candles on them own, candles on their own are nothing more than candles on their own. In other words, they don't mean diddly. Uh, they do have some meaning to them, but you and I, they don't really have meaning unless they are part of a pattern out there. Otherwise, they're just kind of interesting to discuss. In other words, you wouldn't just go long a hammer candle because it existed. If you did, what you would get, you would get your, 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 your you know what hammered out there and you don't want to do that. And trust me, uh, I've run the uh, the back testing on that specifically, which is how I then determined that hammer candles really need to be accompanied with a pattern out there. So back to uh, Ruby's question out here as she's looking for a bottom as natural gas. Again, this is a continuous contract, uh, but nonetheless, I'm sure this is what we would see. You've got price pushing lower, doing less relative energy out there. And today you've got a bullish reversal signal. So this suggests to me that this wants to head to higher price. Now, where is higher price inside natural gas? Well, could take you all the way back into the April 11th high. So look at the April 11th area inside that uh, contract. We'll do that for you as well. Let's find April 11th. Where is April 11th? Right here. Right here. So that would say, um, what would it say? About 282 to 277 um, would be that price projection of resistance. There is a new profile that formed out here today on this uh, September contract. The problem is, I don't think I have this. Let me Let me see if I do have this in my synthetic version. Uh, because that would be even more helpful, or at least more reliable. Yeah, I don't have that, which is a bummer. But, hey, it is what it is. And uh, so at this stage, uh, Ruby, I think you you are trading this alongside, and, and I concur. It's as simple as that. You've got that bullish reversal signal today. That's what you wanted to see. And uh, best of luck with that trade. Peter from Park City, he's a currency hunter. He wants to take a look at the U.S. dollar, Swiss franc out here. So if we take a look at it, um, uh, I'm not sure which, which, which side you want to take on this. So... Um, let me see, this is the Swiss franc U.S. dollar. You might have wanted, do I have it out here? I could always change it around. But you were looking for the, um, well, we'll just leave this. We'll leave it this way. This will work for Peter as well. So let's come over. You were looking for profile information. So let's change that up. Now, this is going to give you the short-term 30-minute chart that we've got up here. Um, uh, you've got the 120 minutes, you've got the five hour, and then you've got the daily out here. So when we take a look at it with regard to profiles, it's below all profiles, daily, weekly, and so forth. So all that we can say about the Swiss franc is that it's made 100% move of a move. Let's take a look at that out here, Peter. And you know that the uh, fire drill for 100% move of a move is prepare because things may be getting to reverse. So Peter, if you're saying that this is a good indicator for gold, then what's the message that uh, this shares with you right now with regard to the Swiss franc trading all the way back to the uh, January 10th, 2019 level out there? Now, you're the one that's been following this, so I don't know how to answer that question. I, I would say, though, if the Swiss franc breaks through that level, then its next level out here takes you back into the September 2018 area. Um, but right now, you've made or it's made the Swiss franc 100% move of a move getting back. And so if gold is going to continue to run, um, this needs to crack that level. So your point is that if you just take a look at this, that you're expecting a pullback in gold um, if the Swiss franc here rallies. Well, yeah, you've got your signal, I would say, the only signal that I can provide to you that you've made that 100% move of a move. So I hope that helps you out. Now, what about Goldilocks? What is gold doing out here? So gold, I would have to say, is doing the following... And I'm just trying to find it. The question is, where did I put it on my charts out here? So I shared this with subscribers this morning just to try to give them a feel for where gold is likely headed to. And wouldn't you know it, wouldn't you know it, I I can't, I uh, don't see it. Jeez Louise, where is it? It's got to be out here. Um, I don't want to waste your time. My apologies, gold, monthly, long-term, that wasn't the chart I was looking for. 
I'll have to. I'll pull it up during the. I'll pull it up during the next breakout here. Um, nonetheless, 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 nonetheless. If we take a look at uh, gold here on the daily time frame, what do we know about it? Um, looks like it wants to make a run to its next level out here, Peter, which is 1430. Uh, I don't see any type of topping signal. Now, what's interesting here about gold, Peter, and you taking a look at it with regard to the way the Swiss franc and the U.S. dollar is trading is uh, today's going to be day number seven of a TD setup uh, nine count. That means uh, tomorrow could be the top. Right, the top could form on days eight, nine, or the day after. So it's tomorrow through Thursday. Ideally, Peter, what you'd see here is two things hook up at the same time. You'd see a slight pullback, not a higher high, let's say tomorrow, and then it goes on to make that higher high the next day or the day after to give you wave number seven, letter G on my screen. Maybe that combined with a TD setup nine count in your Swiss franc tells you the whole picture and nothing but the picture. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trade along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So this was the chart for gold that I was looking at out here. And uh, so, Peter, you know, watch the 1426-ish area. 
out here. That is its next weekly horizontal trading range. That's probably one of the key levels that gold would need to cross. Uh, you can see that back here, this is a weekly chart we're looking at back in August of 2013. Uh, that is where a price had petered out, so to speak. It was just kind of a play on words there, Peter. And uh, so I would watch that 1427-ish area out here. That's the horizontal trading range. And uh, to use that along with what we looked at on the daily time frame. So hope that that helps you out. Uh, we got a question out here. This is uh, from uh, HD. HDTV writes in, I have ring. HD, I have had ringing in my ears for a long time. Yeah, the old tinnitus. So you've got it too. Uh, no, you're talking about ring ring the uh, ticker symbol out here so uh, let's go take a look at uh, ring and what do we see here? I've got ring as you bought it last week was hoping you wouldn't mind looking at it again well we're gonna do that no problem it's up some since then and I have a stop at 2020 for the uh, day so and you're looking at uh, Nokia a little over five bucks. Let's do this, uh, uh, HD. I'm going to come back to Ring only because we've got a caller on the line, and you know we've got call ahead seating out here, and then we'll go ahead and I'll make sure we take a look at Ring. So let's go out to Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. How are you today? Doing fantastic, Steve. How about yourself? I hope uh, you had a good weekend. Uh, I did, although uh, it's uh, getting it's warmer down here in South Florida than I recall it in a long, long time. So, uh, but uh, that's that's not your worry. Uh, but you're in uh, U.S. Silica Holdings, which I know uh, you had uh, I think written in about last week, and it was looking very good. Um, how can I help you? Uh, we have a little more information now uh, with last week's you know trading, and so now we have that weekly candle to look at. And then I just I thought you said something about. I think it was uh, 1303 might have been a level to keep an eye on. Thir 1309. This is this is the level oh, okay. that you'll want to see uh, U.S. Silica Holdings close above to to really give you a confirmation of a change in trend. And, and what I mean by that, folks, first let's take a look at the bottom. So when Brent had called in or he had written in, we were paying attention to. Uh, price moving lower, doing less relative energy, uh, which was uh, generating the Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom. It was doing that on June 14th. The signal that was important for Brent to catch was on June 15th. That was the hammer candle. If that wasn't enough for a bullish reversal, well, then you had the bullish engulfing candle on the following day. Then what I had suggested to Brent is watch that. So it gave you the definite bottoming signal. Now, whenever anything, my, my take, whenever anything tops or bottoms, uh, what we don't know is just how significant or, or serious that is. But we can take a look at levels of support or resistance, see if they fail. That's going to help to paint the picture out here. So what I immediately did was I went back to the uh, to where this had formed its last Tom DeMarc setup, nine count out here. That, in essence, is giving you and I the breakdown area. That took place on May 21st, and that was your 1309 level. So if price does close above 1309, that is a bullish change in trend signal on top of the bottoming pattern that was produced out here. Now, the worst thing that you could see over the course of the next several days, Brent, would be for a TD setup nine count. Now, when I say over the next several days, you're talking five, six, seven, eight. You're not talking till Thursday, Thursday, Friday, or Monday that you get that nine count confirmation below 1309. Typically, when you get that, if you were, I'm not, I don't know if we are or we aren't. I'm just saying watch it. If you were to get it before that resistance line, um, it's telling you that this was just a counter trend rally. At least that's the message on the daily time frame. A heck of a wide ranging bar on the uh, weekly time frame out here. But right now, I'm watching the daily signals on this to generate the key message for you. So I know that maybe was long winded, but that's what I'm looking at. Now, the interesting no, was, thing here is great. you also yeah, got an sure. island bottom. And I, I don't know if you picked up on that. Um, but uh, there's here's a beautiful uh, let me draw this in for the folks at home. And typically there's there's not really a better bullish indicator than an actual island bottom. And in this case here, folks, that was formed when uh, SLCA had gapped to the downside on May 23rd. The high out there on that May 23rd date was 11.67 versus the low of the prior session at 11.92. And then just a few days ago on June the 20th out here, so on Thursday, price gaps up and it gaps up above what set up really the high of June 19th, but more importantly, it gapped up above that high of May 23rd. 
and that price point again was 1167. So you know you got to stay with this trade. I think you do. You're I think you're in at a good spot, and you've just you've gotten beautiful signals. Now you want to see the last thing fail, which is that TD setup resistance line. That's fantastic, Steve. I really appreciate it. That kind of just gives me some other levels to be watching, and that's what I was looking for. So much appreciated. Oh, have hey, have a great day. And you bet. You know, your help is always uh, much appreciated, so just take care. Hey, my pleasure. Always good talking with you and, and everyone else. That was Brent in Martinez, California. And now we're going to go back to Ring out here um, and uh, Ring and, and Nokia, I believe. So let's go take a look at Ring. Let's come take a look at the three time frames uh, for it. Where is that? Oh, I'm on it. Uh, so let me just change that here. So we've got R-I-N-G. And let me make sure that I understand the question again. So you asked about it last week. Uh, it's up some since then. And you've got to stop at 2020 for the day at 2020. Okay, so let's take a look at Ring. It's up nicely, uh, volume behind the 236,000 shares. For it, it's pretty nice. Here's what you're going to want to watch really tomorrow, I would say. Um, this, does, does Ring make a higher high tomorrow? If Ring makes a higher high tomorrow, then you don't have to worry about the TD setup nine count to the upside out here. That says the breakout area that began on June the 12th. That price point out there, folks, is 1774. That was the low. So that's support out here. Of course, we can see Stevie's red line is 1914. That's a that's a a higher level of support that price would have to break through. But when we take a look at Ring, you can see that Friday was day number nine to that setup nine count. So you're watching, and, and if it's going to form a top using this pattern, if it's going to form a top using this pattern, uh, then today's high would be it. So if tomorrow it trades lower out there, just continue to keep your stops in place or what you want to do because it's signaling a potential of a, a bottom. Let me see where the lowest low is out here to do a bit of a wave count to the upside. See where we're at there. You're in wave number seven or six out here as we speak right now. Um, so that's what I see when I take a look at ring on the daily time frame. If we look at just profiles themselves, you're above daily, weekly, and uh, the center of the quarterly profile, which is a 2006. So this is good. Um, what else do I have for you? What do we have with Ring on a monthly time frame? Not much. And not that it's bad. I just don't show you know, a clear bottoming signal there. So HD, that's my take. Ring looks good, uh, but it's time to be cautious. With regard to A to B equals CD patterns out here, let's look at the weekly time frame. The swing point, which was the high from February 18th, that was at 1863. It was 1 1.8 million shares. When that was passed, it was 1.1. Nine. So it's been passed with lighter volume. Doesn't mean the A to B equals CD pattern can't play out. So I think your critical day or days are really the next few days out here for Ring. So HD, I hope that helps you out. By the way, it's one to one A to B equals CD. The upside on the weekly is 2117. I'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back. So, HD, I know you were asking about Nokia, and we did take a look at this, I think, last week. So, look, on a daily time frame, I don't have any real clear message here. I believe if we did take a look at Nokia, if we didn't hear, it's the weekly time frame that generated the uh, bottoming signal, just like the uh, TD setup. Um, well, the TD setup nine count is what was identified on a weekly basis, both the bottom and the top out here. So, you can see that if you watch this on Tiger TV. What hasn't uh, occurred on a weekly basis, I know you're looking at uh, something. At taking along a little over five bucks, I would say you really need to see price close over 521 and on a weekly basis out here to suggest that okay, there's more to it. Uh, and, you know, and the bottom is relatively solid. That's Stevie's red line on the weekly time frame. I default to the weekly time frame because it has clear signals. And you always like to look for clear signals, whatever the time frame is. I look at this daily time frame. I, I, I got no clear signals. Does anybody have any clear signals? I don't have any clear signals out here. So that's why I don't want to rely upon it, HD, to generate anything. Now, what I did also do is I put up a Nokia. This is the monthly time frame chart. Uh, this takes us back to uh, when this began trading back in 1994. And on this chart here, you've got the horizontal trading ranges monthly. This is monthly time frame that we're looking at. 47 times we've seen price close on a monthly basis at 599. 47 times. Largest number of opens or closes on a monthly basis going all the way back um, all those years. So that's going to be a, a, a critical resistance level. Uh, but that's how I would play this, uh, That this being a Nokia. So the best signal came on the uh, weekly time frame with regard to its bottom. But you need to see price close over 522 to then suggest a run to the $6 area would be likely. So I hope that that helps you out. And uh, thanks for your patience in uh, letting me uh, go to uh, Brent to ask his uh, question out there. Let's go to Alex's question. Alex says, hey, Steve, uh, Q's hit 191.32 uh, two times. April 29th and May 1st, using the NQ, can this price be hit again short term? So I want to take a look at the NQ if I hear you correctly. So if we look at the NQ, what do we know about the NQ? If we look at the daily time frame out here, um, we just notice nothing more than a sideways movement. I don't see any inside the NQ on a daily time frame. I do not see a topping pattern or signal. There could be a topping pattern form which would be that TD setup nine count. Today is going to be day number six. So remember, that could happen on day number eight, nine, or the day after. So that's Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Um, so if you're asking, can the Qs get up and test this one? Well, let me just go over and make sure I see what, what it is that, that Alex is uh, referring to. So let me come back here. Let's put up the uh, Qs. And you were talking about... 
April 29th and May 1st. So, yeah, I, I, I don't see – the only way that I can answer that clearly is to say, you know, do I see some type of topping signal? And, well, let me look at the weekly chart. Let me do this. So here's the issue that the weekly chart has. Slight issue. You know, it's, it's just dealing with the breakdown here. That's that green horizontal line going across my chart. Let me look at the um, – let me look at the – has market not no let me look at the horizontal trading ranges so if we look at the nq here yeah so you know alex if we look at the horizontal trading ranges out here they suggest at this stage here so we know there's no topping pattern that is in play right now maybe wednesday maybe thursday maybe friday um if we take a look and so they're so they're without so this would suggest that price will continue higher and if so uh price ought to uh, tag it's a weekly horizontal trading range at 78.64 if it does that it's going to be back up towards those highs that you were referring to so that's what i see if i look at a short-term chart out here just curious what if anything is on the short term not much not really much of a signal that I see out here. So we'll go with the uh, daily time frame for the NQ, which in essence is what Alex wants to stage, answering his question about will the Qs get all the way back up to their prior highs out there. So at this stage here, looks pretty good. What, would, what could call that off? Well, a lot of things could. One of the things that could call that off, I've been gone all morning, so I'm really just jumping into the seat right now. So I haven't even looked at this chart here, but we should. So we can see here, so here is the one issue. So the markets themselves, the indices, have not formed a topping pattern per se. But when we take a look at this chart here, this chart, by the way, is the New York Stock Exchange, and that's at the top. We're looking at all closing prices, that, therefore the line chart out here. But the most important thing to take a look at here, Alex, is a couple of days ago, and I believe we discussed this uh, during the show, you got the advanced decline oscillator for the New York Stock Exchange up to that plus 150 level. I believe it was plus 152 to be exact out here, but I'm not going to cry over two, uh, two points out there. And, um, well, yeah, 152.75. And, and the turndown is what I like to refer to as a plus 150 failure. You see, closing above, not, not two points. If we would have had follow through on the next day, then that two points would have meant something. It didn't mean anything. It actually did have a meaning. You got to turn down from there. So what we're now watching for here, Alex, is, well, advanced decline oscillator closed below the zero line. You're a positive 43.73, so no harm done, but something to be paying attention to. Now, if you get that combined with, combined with a, a spot fix index that closes above the 50-day exponential moving average, right now, the 50 days at 1571. The spot is trading at 1535. If you get that combo out here, well, hey, here's the ideal trade setup. You get this combo. It all lines up with your NQ, form that TD setup nine count. That uh, would be the actual topping signal. If we get this to generate a topping signal earlier, then this is the one that's painting the message. That this being the New York Stock Exchange combined. This is key, folks. T combined. Don't 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 listen to one sentence and not the other sentence. You must have both. You must have the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator trading below, closing below its zero line, combined with the spot volatility index closing below its 50-day exponential moving average. Let's go out to Philadelphia and speak with John. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? How was your weekend? Do we have John? Do we have John? I don't hear him. In my ears, guys. I don't hear him. Ah, uh, looks like he dropped. Okay, or got cut off. Uh, and what John wanted to look at was uh, coffee futures. I want to look at the September coffee futures out here. And so uh, let's go do that. Um, and uh, John, if you're on the line, you want to call back in, would love to uh, hear from you. But right now, with regard to the daily time frame, I didn't mean to close that. Um, if we're taking a look at the daily time frame here for coffee futures, let me also see if I KC U19 on my other charts 
if I have that uh, loaded. I do. Locked and loaded. So right now, price is trading right down to one potential support level, that being the bottom of its uh, daily profile out there. By the way, that price point, John, is 100.44. You're trading at 100.65. Um, so we're about to go to breakout here. If this support level holds, uh, then you'd be looking for price to make a run for 104.89. I'll look at it further during the break, see if I can come up with anything for our two-minute wrap. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Right now we have the Dow up 21 points, S&P off two. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go to uh, John again. Uh, John, are you uh, on the line? Yes, I was. Steve, can you hear yeah. me? Yes, 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 yes. Hey, by the way, when I was Steve. talking about coffee, I had the wrong, uh, I had the wrong year inside my uh, contract, and so so things have changed just slightly out there. But uh, how can I help you? <laughs> yes, sir, uh, Steve. Since late April, I have been successfully trading exclusively the long side on coffee. I'm long, as we speak. The coffee uh, just uh, the market just closed. Can you show me? Your work that will give us numbers that the price has to get through to continue the rally phase. I'm just be helpful. It would be helpful to me to get those to identify spots to book gains on longs uh, against. So I appreciate that. 
Yeah, so a couple of things. One, I wanted to I point this chart out. I had posted it in a den earlier, but I want other folks to take a look. This is a long-term monthly chart uh, for coffee. And if we take a look at the uh, bottom that formed out here, this is in May, um, you can see that starting from the high out here, this little shooting star back in October of, uh, when is that? Looks like 2015, uh, that, the, uh, that this formed wave number seven or letter number G. And with the uh, close of this month coming at the end of this week, looks like that's going to be a confirmed potential, very significant bottom signal. As far as prices that uh, may need to be cleared, there would just be a few of them, John. One's going to be 104.89. That's the top of the next weekly profile. So you're 103.70. And then you've got 108.60. That's the top of the daily profile. It was also the swing high out there. So you'll know if you clear that, then you may have an A to B equals C to the upside. One one last number that I would take a look at is the resistance level established by its uh, most recent TD setup nine count. That's the February 8th. It looks like it's February 8th. That price point out there is 107.70. So 107.70. Those would be the, the three numbers that I'd be watching if I were you. But it looks like coffee's made a major bottom. Hope that helps you out. Thanks so much. You Do bet. Have it. A, you bet. Have a great day. Folks, stay tuned. Our favorite polar bear, David White's up next. Tom O'Brien from 3 to 5. I'll be back with you on Terrific Tuesday, but have a magical Monday. Take care, folks.